Hi, everybody. Welcome to Rock, Paper, Hand, Grenades. This is, uh, I guess, this is officially our Christmas edition, right? Officially. Officially, officially. yes. And you have the uh, Gary, the yeah, honorable, yeah. the honorable uh, Gary Hopper. Yeah, I, I Gary made Hopper. a special Christmas decoration for those people who can't see it. So I'll have to describe it to you. That is the most unique Christmas it's, decoration it I've ever seen. No, nobody's ever had a hand grenade inside of a wreath before. I yes, don't think. yes. Except maybe in combat they do that, and I don't know. Well, they should, yeah, really, they should. For, for Christmas. Why but, wouldn't you? No. Today, we're, we're doing something really strange. We're actually going to talk about Christmas in the, um, the biblical sense of the word as opposed to the buying present sense of the word. And I'm doing that this year because I don't have any money. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Sweet. <laughs> and, and for that purpose, we have uh, a Pastor McKinney from Gosstown Congregational Church. You have to get kind of a little oh, bit close okay. to the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if you were having me here because it cost you no money. That too. Okay. That too. That's why Matt's here too. He <laughs> cost me no money. That's right. I want to talk about a news item, a couple news items that I think are real important. Uh, one was this is uh, via my mom. Mom told me that uh, there was this, uh, I think Channel 7 had a report that said if you text for one minute, you go the entire length of a football field. Um, without actually paying attention to the road. So I did some calculating in my head. So I could be off, by the way. Mm -hmm. But that means if you're texting for over a second, it's best if you're not going 120 miles an hour. Huh. So I'm just saying, you know, you, you pick one or the other. If you're going to text, try to keep it under 100. But, you know, if you're going 120, you really shouldn't be texting. Now, that's interesting. I always thought it was the other way around. What? That if you're going, that if you're texting, you should be driving extremely fast. That's only if you can text extremely fast. It oh, has, right. You have to keep pace. Which I can. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess you can go 120 miles an hour and text. That's awesome. But keep it under 30 seconds. Uh, yeah. Half a second. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. You know, when you're doing 120. Okay. Now, when you go down to 60, you can go to a second at a time because that's only, you know, half a football. Less, less pressure. A lot less. Yeah. So just just trying to help. I, okay. You know, I hope I'm not a bad influence on anybody. Oh, the other thing uh, in the news today was uh, down at Shaw's Plaza in, in uh, Pennardville. It was a horrible thing. The uh, uh, Frosty the Snowman was uh, kicked out of uh, Shaw's. Really? Yeah. He was in the uh, in the uh, produce section picking his nose. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that's, that's the big news. Yeah. I thought maybe he was maybe he started melting or something in the no, head, you know, because no. that makes a big mess. No, he's over there grabbing the you know the carrots. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> we need a rim shot. Yeah, I know. Sound we, effect. We, we, we do need something. We yes. need sound effects for this show. <laughs> it's a cheap show though. That's why we're on it. That's right. Yes. You know? it doesn't. Yeah. If we could afford things like sound effects. We wouldn't. Work. Oh, the soundboard is working. What does that mean? There, a there, there's a soundboard on here. There is? What does it do? <laughs> I've never actually used it. Really? They use it on Manstradam. I'm paying you the big bucks and you don't know? I know. There's folders at the there's bottom. There should be a rim shot in the Will and Joe. Oh, folder. really? Yeah. Oh, oh, that's wait, cool. Wait, wait, well, wait, wait. Let's, let's hear it then. All right. Well, let's... Do I have to do the old joke over again? Oh, no. not no, Definitely no. not. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm looking for a rim shot. I don't... Will oh, there it is. Oh, jeez! Very nice, very nice. Wow. Thanks, Joe. Wow, it's like a whole new world. It is. It is. <laughs> this, this, this opens great new doors to. That's a gong. Yeah. Goes for a long time. Yeah, that's a, that's a gong from uh, hell or something. Wow. Anyway. <laughs> um. Okay, back on track. <laughs> Pastor, I'd like I'd, first. Uh, this is like an hour program, so you actually got time to talk. Uh, how did you get into uh, the ministry? You're, he's our he's our new pastor at Con, uh, Gosstown Congregational, and uh, if anybody is uh, wants to have some fun on a Sunday, we should come over and check it out. Really, really nice church. Really nice people. It, it, they even let me in there. Really? I, I have to go in the back door, of course, but that's only reasonable. They throw so, some holy water on you on your they, way in. Yeah, they, and then they. Put me in like a. Uh, um, I'm the only, let me put it this way. I'm the only one in the church that has to wear a burqa. Mm -hmm. But anyway. Well, that's <laughs> strange. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty strange. Yes. Huh. <laughs> 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 oh yeah. Uh, oh who? 
The thought of you in a burka pleases the audience. We have a huge crowd here. It's like we're at a, a Joel Osteen megachurch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so how did, how, what motivated you to get into the, uh, to be a pastor? Yeah, I um, really didn't attend much church growing up and was uh, not, didn't really have much of a faith, not a Christian, and uh, was, uh, got into uh, accounting, into business. I was a CFO, COO, Chief Operating Officer, Chief Financial Officer, that sort of thing, running sort of middle-sized companies, and uh, but my faith really took hold and uh, started getting involved in church leadership and people just uh, in the church leadership what, yeah, but pushed me back up into what, that direction. what mo you know if things are going really well uh -huh. what motivated you to start going to church if you if you you obviously you were making pretty decent change things are going well you got the nice house and all the other all the other adornments and stuff like that what is there's got to be something that you know People don't give up Sundays just other than to watch football if, unless there's something that's mo pushing them. Mm. Yeah, I mean, what you said is true. I was doing quite well financially, had uh, you know, nice home, nice homes, uh, had really young kids going to the right school on all sorts of boards. And as people may look at me and think, wow, that guy's really accomplished or, or you know, he must have a great life. But, yeah, I just felt, uh, you know, like whatever I went after, it was never enough, mm -hmm. and always just kind of like chasing after the wind. You could never catch it. You could never have enough money. You could never, nothing was ever really satisfying. And uh, frankly, my marriage started falling apart, and and things of that nature. Where I was really faced with some uh, you know, difficulty in my life. A lot of other things going on that mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. just kind of out of control. It felt like even though I was in control in so many ways, it seemed. So um, just started praying and asking. God to reveal himself. I said, there has to be more to life than this. This is just horrible. And um, uh, went into a Barnes & Noble bookstore in Florida on vacation one day and uh, said to my wife, I have to buy a Bible. She's like, what? You want to buy a Bible? What are you talking about? <laughs> and then I went to pay for it. And, and you know, it was like I was bringing uh, you know, a Playboy or something to the register. I felt embarrassed. What if someone oh, no sees way. me That's awesome. with a Bible? So I... Um, it's not mine. I'm buying it for a friend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but I, I started reading it and uh, became really convicted about my life and, and the life that I was living and the fact that um, you know, I was basically, a, probably most people would say a good person, you know, but uh, you know, realized that I had this sinful nature that was unpleasing to God in me and that there was no way I could be good enough to uh, satisfy God. And, and realize that God has a pretty high standard. It's not mostly good. It's like perfect. So, um, like Matt. <clears throat> yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. Like me. Like, like yes. Matt. Yes. <laughs> so unless you're Matt. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I know so. it's intimidating. <clears throat> yeah, I know you are. Yeah. But it, you know, but I realized that I needed, I needed a savior, someone to save me from that, and that was, that is Christ. Okay. He is the Savior that I read about in the scriptures. So as I read through that, the, the word of God actually convicted me and, and brought me to my knees to the point where I surrendered to Christ. And, and that brought about a great change in my life. That, that's, pretty, now, that's pretty amazing because you've you obviously had this career. You've, you've um, given up what would uh, on the surface look very lucrative for something that isn't that lucrative. <laughs> Most people would say that wasn't the wisest uh, um, employment decision. Yeah, most of my friends have asked me why I've become downwardly mobile. Downwardly mobile, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was a great decision. Uh, you know, the peace I have now is just amazing, and uh, the hope I have now is good. I mean, really knowing uh, that God has a place for me in heaven, that I uh, ha have a real hope there in Christ. And uh, it's just changed my whole outlook on life, things I was unable to do before, like have joy in the midst of a trial, for instance. Uh, right. Now mm -hmm. I can do To find humor or happiness in, in things that, you know, most people would just be devastated by. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. we went through a lot. My wife and I both did, and she became uh, a Christian shortly after that. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So after seeing some of the change in my life, became interested. At first, she thought it was crazy. Really? Right. What's wrong with you? you know, did she what? give Did she give you a hard time in the a beginning? A little bit. A little yeah. bit. Yeah. She, you know, she had a respect for it in a way, but thought he's really gone off the end or something. <laughs> yeah. And uh, until she started understanding and, and talked through it and saw some of the change in me, in ways that she never would have imagined. Now, now, seeing that the, the the changes in your in your life, does she suspect that maybe you're moving to New Hampshire to join the militia too? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she'd ever think that. No, uh, that'd be no, awesome. No. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to the Sunday's got camo. Yeah, that'd be great. It might be a good sermon <laughs> illustration some Sunday. But yes, yeah. yes. So, uh, anyway, um, so that brings us kind of to our topic, which is is really about Christmas. Mm. And, uh, whoa, whoa, I think we got a special guest. Is Tiny Tim back? No, not oh. Tiny Tim. <laughs> oh, oh, got a different spe- oh, a different special guest. So. <laughs> oh, 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 gee. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Oh, 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 if it ain't St. Nick, how are you doing? I'm all doing all- Oh, I heard good news. St. Nick looks extremely tall in that uh, chair. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, well, he has to be pretty big to carry on. I feel I'm pretty short about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, uh-huh. Santa. There's good news, uh, news today. I, I didn't realize until just recently that, um, that uh, Rudolph, his nez- nose was glowing all the time. It turns out he had a wee bit of a drinking problem. He's just out of, re- out of the Betty Ford Clinic just this past weekend. Is he going to be uh, well, up and running for... Yes, he is on track. He's going to do very well. We uh, accept anybody at, at Santa Land to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to... <laughs> 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 you know, if somebody has a problem, we take care of ourselves up <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So I want, I've been wanting to ask you about the uh, the elves. Yeah. I know that every year... Oh, this is going to be awkward, isn't it? <laughs> Elf talk is always very awkward. No, 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 no. I'm not. They're actually elven, elven Americans. So elven, that's a, they're not elven Americans. They, they, North Pole. they can call they're each other elf. Oh, I'm sorry. That's North Pole. Oh, I'm sorry. You're, you're not you're even right. saying it's not necessarily even American. Well, they they keep coming over the border. I get confused. No, 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 I apologize. no. That's a different border. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. No, I'm not very bright. So, so Sienna. <laughs> yeah. I know that from the papers that every year you kind of uh, you know go after the after Christmas and all the work is done, you head down to uh, Florida and vacation. What do you what do the elves do? Do they get a vacation? I mean, like, as, as they, are they union? Is my question. Uh, no, no, they are not union because uh, we treat them very well up there. So they don't have to form a union. Do they get like a, a month off or two weeks? What do they uh, get? They get six weeks off after Christmas. Six weeks after, and they get back to pounding the nails. Yes. The... Yeah. They have a four hundred one k plan. Yeah. You know, for retirement. Retire. So where do they retire? Oh, they'll retire on this special island below uh, Florida that I have, and they come down Cuba. in the winter. They go to Cuba. Well, it's just off Cuba. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, I was going to say, I'm thinking Guantanamo Bay or something, and that's, that's <laughs> yeah. not fair. It doesn't seem... It doesn't seem... <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Get them yeah. all. No, so they do terrible. very well there. Oh, yeah, okay. they do? All right. Yeah. No, I pay them very well. Uh, I, I have a lot of support through uh, around the world for Santa. There is? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. There is quite the pro-Santa movement, from what I understand. There yes. is a pro-Santa. Yes. There have you, is. Have you thought of uh, running for a world dictator? No. No. No, I, I is, think... Am I the first person to ask that? No, you aren't, because there are a few people that would like to have that. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. Uh, uh, but there's a few people that would like to do it, and uh, I think as Santa, I'm going to try to stop them. Yeah, okay, that's that's cool. That's, yeah. that's, that's super cool. I'm still a little bit aggravated with you, by the way. Well, I apologize for that. I, I, I see that every year. Um, I have been giving you gifts because you have been a good boy lately. Yeah, yeah, except that one year. Yeah, when you're around eight, uh, yeah. but there was a good reason for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, but Cole, for the one, I just like one thing I did wrong. Well, mm-hmm. but it was pretty severe. And, and at Santa, when I do my list, it isn't like a public school where everybody's a winner. You have to earn your, your present. Yeah, but so what? It was, you know, what? Go ahead, tell him what I did. What Gary did is he threw a fork at his sister when he was eight years old, and it stuck in her tongue. 
She deserved it. She's a jerk. <laughs> well, it could have been worse. Could have been her eye or something. Yeah, well, I didn't it. poke her eyes out or nothing. Yeah. Well, but it was close, so I had to teach you a lesson. Doesn't it make for a good family story? I mean, come on. How yeah. bad can it be? Yeah, well, exactly. well, but it worked because when you were nine, you were a good boy. Oh, no, it wasn't that good. I mean, it's kind well, of you're, better. you're comparatively speaking. I stuck no. Yeah. I stuck. I stuck no. Uh, sharp objects into my little sister that year. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true. I went through quite a few years without sticking any sharp objects into her. Oh, yes. really? I thought I thought that was pretty pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I, I like your guest that we have today. Yeah. Uh, because uh, what you got to remember is that Christmas isn't just Santa. Oh, I thought that's all it was. Oh no. No. No, it's no. about Christ. Really? Yes. It's not about. No, Santa's just a bonus. The presents are just an extra bonus. To celebrate, uh, how'd you get the name Saint Nick, by the way? What, what did you, what miracle? Because you have to do miracles to be, I guess, giving kids presents every year. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's how I got it. <laughs> Going down the chimney, Saint Nick. <laughs> now, do you feel safe doing that with all the firearms that are around New Hampshire? Is one of my, one of oh, I love coming to New Hampshire. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. I bet there's been a tense situation or two, though, huh? You coming down the chimney in the middle of the night? Well, every now and then, they'll like down in Merrimack. Mm -hmm. There's a woman down there yeah, that. She's a little bit, yeah. Yeah, she's, she she's gets quick. a little trigger happy. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. <laughs> She chased off a burglar the other day, and yeah, uh -huh. hopefully she that. knows I'm coming. Most yeah. of them, everybody knows I'm coming, so they're pretty good about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So you, uh, we're here to talk about uh, uh, how did the the birth of Christ, which is actually what Christmas is all about, like you said. It is. So can you tell us how? I'd like to go into a little bit about the uh, uh, pastor about the. Um, because a lot of people don't know is the prophecies that preceded Christ's birth. Where are they? What were they? Those that kind of thing. Because because Christ's actual birth was prophesized. I know hundreds of years, but how far back? Yeah, I mean, really, you have, you have, even back to the beginning, even back to the Book of Genesis. No, you have oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Testing one, two, three. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, we we have we have to be. You go way back to Genesis uh, 3, chapter 3, which is the beginning of the Bible, really, okay. the beginning of the Old Testament, and the first book of the Old Testament, where uh, there is, uh, where Adam and Eve are found in sin, right? right? We know what they did, and then, uh, so God, uh, they blame the serpent. Right, who, just like, just like I probably blamed my, uh, somebody else when my sister got the fork in the dirt. Time. Yeah, I probably yeah. tried to blame it on somebody else, but oh, my brothers but, were older and smarter <laughs> than me. Oh, 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 but I saw it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, uh, that, that makes that's a creeping me out right now. But anyway, so you know, it goes back. <laughs> <laughs> we have some work to do. Good thing your pastor is here too. We got yeah, some work to do. I know, buddy. I know. <laughs> you better be good for goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, but that was that was the first prophecy mm -hmm. that that uh, back in Genesis 3.15, that, that Christ would come, the Messiah would come, and would, would crush uh, Satan. Okay. And, and, it, and it went on from there. And, and through the Bible, the Old Testament, there are, uh, I've never counted them, how many, but it's not just 20 or 30 prophecies about uh, Christ that would come. But uh, he is mentioned all throughout the Old Testament, and it points to him. And the way the Bible works is it reveals over time more and more about Christ. So it's, it's progressively revealing who Christ is. And you have this gap between the Old Testament and the New Testament of about four or 500 years yep. where there was no more prophecy. Prophecy had stopped. Right. And uh, people were waiting. There was a lot of expectation uh, based on what was happening, uh, the Roman oppression, that sort of thing, that the Messiah would come, that this would be the time that he would come. Okay, but now um, the fact, like for instance, where is it? It, he, I know that he had to be born in uh, Bethlehem, but that was well, who who prophesied that specifically. So, uh, well, there are a number of different prophecies. I mean, if we, if you, you know, people watching at home, everyone has a Bible, right, at, at home, or if they don't, they have access to the internet probably, so that they can look up a Bible online. But mm -hmm. a good place to to do what you're asking is to go to the book of Matthew, which is in the New Testament. Okay. And if you go there, uh, you see a lot 
of these prophecies because Matthew, who was the person that wrote this book, that was inspired to write this book, he was Jewish and he was writing to Jews so right. that they might get an understanding of who Jesus was in the context of Jewish you know, history. The, Jewish history, right. And especially with regard to the prophecy of the Messiah. And Matthew points uh, to a number of them. Uh, the book actually starts out with a great one. He, he goes through this genealogy in the first verse of Matthew, and it takes up about half uh, that first chapter, talking about how Christ can be uh, traced back through his genealogy, which was very important to Jews, uh, to, to be able to anchor themselves back to someone, to, especially to Abraham. Right. And so they, he, he brings you back to Abraham and, and to David. And there were two prophecies related to the Messiah uh, through, through the Davidic line, David's line, yep. uh, that the Messiah would come, and, and also uh, through the promise to Abraham uh, that he would uh, have a, a, a great nation that would right. come through Christ, would come through the, through the Messiah's line. So he, he sets up this, this great um, uh, genealogy here to point to how Christ is connected uh, through his father. Okay. Back through. So that, that's sort of the first indication. And a, a Jewish person reading, reading this would, would be all over all the prophe prophecy that's in here. Um, but the one you're talking about came from Micah. And he talks about it in chapter 2 of Matthew in uh, verse 5. Matthew speaking says, So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And now he's quoting the prophet Micah. Okay. Uh, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. Now, Bethlehem was this little town of 200 people, but it was prophesied that the Messiah would come through that little town. Okay. Yeah, it's because it's, it's a, a lot of a lot of the um, all the way through. It it talks about different prophecies that Christ fulfilled, and that was was just one of them, of of the uh, the fact that he would be born in Bethlehem. But what is um. Uh, one thing we had a caller, I think, I forget how long ago it was, that was really irate, <laughs> um, talking about, um, and I should have asked you this ahead of time so you could have uh, had a chance to research it in case, but um, <laughs> I'm not that kind, I guess. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Uh -oh, here we go again. He's a cruel man, but fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, we, had, we had a caller call and say, well, you know, why are you guys celebrating Christian, uh, 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 the birth of Christ when you really don't know when it is and and all this other stuff yeah. and they they say it's a pagan holiday and I understand that from the Bible it's really difficult to pin down the exact time of year I presume it's winter because they were desperately looking for some place to uh, for uh, Mary to have oh, a child that makes sense yeah but I don't know that it was the 25th and yeah. and nobody I don't think does I've always yeah. heard June people speculate that it was June for some reason yeah. No, it, it, I think pretty clear that it was about that time of December, January, probably because they've been able to figure out based on sort of when the census was was taken. There was a census that was taken, yep. and that's why Mary now, and Joseph. That was a Roman thing. The Romans said yeah. they had a census. That's what we actually do that every ten years. And you and go then, and you pay your tax. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that would, they probably didn't have that in New Hampshire then, but uh, <laughs> but you would go pay your tax. And and since uh, Mary and Joseph, Jesus' parents were from uh, her Joseph in particular was from the line of David right so his hometown would have been um, in, in Bethlehem yeah so they had to go back there to pay the tax and and register for the census okay and so when they did that uh, just going through historical documents they're able to trace back and find out when that was approximately uh, when that was issued and some other things are able to date that she was probably pregnant in the spring that sort of thing when she had conceived so they're, they came up with a date of around, I don't know, somewhere between like December 25th and January 4th. Yeah. yeah. Should we grab this yeah, call? sure, why not? Oh, I didn't know we were on the air. Oh. Nice, nice grab. Gone. <laughs> Dial tone. get a sound effect for nice grab? What do you got? Oh, oh I got something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh, Wrong number. <laughs> because I, know, I know that the, the, uh, the, um, Oh man, I'm gonna forget the name because I got drain damage. The cat, not not the uh, the uh, Roman Catholics, but the other Catholics. They celebrated. I uh, 
uh, the uh, Orthodox East, Eastern Orthodox Eastern Church. Orthodox yeah. celebrate it in January. Is that correct? I think I think they do. I think it's early January. Early yeah. January. So we know it's we have an idea of the rough time. So it's not. But it's not it's not something that it's in the Bible that tells us that it's a particular date. That's something that historically people have tried to figure out. And yeah. it's not a date that says this is a date you shall celebrate the birth of Christ or right, anything like right. that. So we celebrate it on the 25th, and some people have a problem with that, but there's really no problem with that because there's no we're celebrating the Savior, the birth of the Savior. So it's I, I I've I've never really bought into that whole argument. So I don't know what your Santa. What do you oh, think about? Oh, oh. Well, uh, I need the whole year to get the presents ready. <laughs> right. So that's why I like the December 25th. Okay. So you, you, you like it where it is right now. Plus, you need snow on the on the roofs to yes. uh, land the sleigh or else it gets a uh, – you have to go through with quite a few uh, runners and stuff like that, I would think. And Absolutely. It's right. nicer to be down in Gitmo, too, that time of year, I think, then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. No doubt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, if we had a caller, I would give him an extra present. Because uh, how many viewers do you have, Gary? Maybe three, four uh, or five? Sometimes my mom watches it if she's not busy playing uh -huh. solitaire. Yeah. So that, that's, that's the one I know of for sure. Now, did, has Matt's mom ever met your mom? Because I was wondering if they've ever talked. Because when Matt was a child, he, he was really the model child. You know, it, I, I well, was, as yes. in physically or as in uh, uh, both. behaviorally? Uh, both. Uh, I used to tell bad boys that they should be like Matt. Oh, I was, really? I was, I was very well behaved, and uh, my parents did put me in this uh, creepy uh, male child uh, beauty pageant type thing. Yes. That is creepy. I know. Explains a lot so about that me. That does explain a lot. That's why you're kind of scarred for life, pretty much. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 But I'm well behaved. Yeah, that's all that counts. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Well behaved. There's so many people who believe, and I've heard this all the time, that they they um, well behaved, so therefore they get to go to heaven. Yeah, no, that's what's, what's, you know that's what I thought what? too, Gary. I thought that it really if you're mostly a good person, you'll go to heaven. Like an, uh, Santa keeps giving you presents every year, you're going to heaven. I think that's the uh, litmus test. No. Uh, no, it's no. not. No, it's not. And that was a surprise to me, too. I, you know, found out that God created man, woman, a certain way in his image. But uh, because of the fall that happened during the early part of Genesis, people have this sin nature, which a sin means that you, uh, something that doesn't please God. Uh, and it can be something you do wrong uh, or something that you fail to do, like God, love, you know, not love each other enough you know if i don't love you enough that's a sin right um yeah, i see you smirking over there you think so <laughs> everyone like, loves gary kind of come on, come oh, on. yes well yes of course yes. <laughs> everyone loves gary but, yes but assuming he was hard, oh, yes, yes assuming I, he was hard to love yes. you know that, <laughs> nothing this year what <laughs> but, but that you know so so we have we have this issue with sin and god requires perfection he, he he says in the scriptures old testament and then christ affirmed it in the new testament he said uh, be perfect as my heavenly Father is perfect in the Sermon on the Mount. And he was raising the level of awareness of sins because there were these uh, religious people that, that thought they were really good. But his point was that you cannot be good enough. Um, the, the standard is perfection. So no one can be perfect, and only Christ was perfect. That's why he had to come. Okay. He had to come uh, to earth. Yeah. I, I always look, there's one passage in the Bible that always kind of, uh, I don't know, I almost looked at it like, I don't know, to justify behavior or, and there's two ways I could look at it. And in and, and the passage, and I don't know where it is, I'm, I'm not that good at that, but it basically says that if you even think of it, think it, it's as if you had done it. If you, if you, uh, look at a woman with lust it's yeah. it's equal to adultery right that that was christ in the sermon on the mount and he right. said the same thing if, if you look at a person with a with a you know hatred thought then in the same way that's the same as murder so he was sort of raising that standard to look at what are the underlying you know in, but he, intent but he, that we have was he raising the standard and at the same point expressing the futility 
of trying to achieve salvation through works. Exactly. That, it's this one and the same. He was raising the standard so that they would see that there's just no one can do that. It's just there, there's just no way you can be good enough to be perfect. Right. And, you know, they were coming up with all kinds of man-made regulations to say, well, if you do this thing and do that thing and you do this other thing, then it qualifies. But, but that's not what the Word of God says, and that's not what Christ said. Right. And, and so it's, it, it's that uh, he came, he was fully righteous, and he was without sin. Right. And lived the perfect life because that's what he, he came to do, was to live the perfect life so that he could be a sacrifice on the cross for the sins of those who believe in him. And, and the reason a sacrifice on the cross was required is that, that God requires a blood sacrifice for sins. And, and Christ was the perfect sacrifice. In the past, the priest would sacrifice, but the sacrifice would only be temporary. Right. Uh, Christ is, is forever. It's, it's <coughs> for past, present, and future sins. It's a perfect sacrifice. Yeah, because it was, it was one of his uh, things that he really got upset about was when he went into the temple, and, mm. and they were actually selling doves so that people could go in. And I don't know if the priests were selling the doves or those are just regular merchants, but... It, it so profoundly upset him that he started tearing up tables, which is kind of proof of who he was in that if it was just a regular person, they would have beaten him up. Mm. You know what I mean? If, yeah, if, right. If, if, right. If somebody started going through and tearing up, you know, uh, uh, built uh, uh, businesses all along Elm Street, somebody's going to stop him and knock him on the head. But they didn't, they, they didn't even know how to deal with it. They, it was... Uh, it's kind of more evidence of who he was, that he was able to, let's call it, get away with that without, I mean, he spoke with such authority that, that, that they were intimidated by him. And Yeah, that plan really unfolded the way it said in prophecy that it would. You know, the whole, the whole thing really just unfolded that way. Even going to the cross, uh, he went to the cross, he had to go to the cross. Right. Um, but the, now the birth of Christ, um, <clears throat> What's always con uh, one thing that's always confused me is the three wise men. Somebody told me years ago that that was uh, they were astrologers. The wise men were actually astrologers, and that's what they were following to get to Christ. Oh, because of they were following a star. A star oh, exactly. that that's that's interesting. Huh. And, so uh, that is I, one thought. But there, first uh, of all, there were not three wise men. We don't know how many there were. The, the, scripture doesn't say. People assume maybe. You've never were. heard the song then. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! Uh, why didn't I think a, catch, a catchy song overrules everything. Yeah. Uh, now my credibility's gone. Yeah. Um, no, th no, they were not. Oh. Okay. So oh, can somebody wants maybe, maybe this is our phantom caller from earlier. Hi, welcome to Rock Paper Hand Grenades. How you doing? How you doing? Who is this? Good. This is Mike from Manchester. Hi, Mike. What's hey, up? Mike. Merry Christmas, by the way. Uh, oh, oh, Merry Christmas, Mike. Same to you. What's your question, young fellow? I uh, just wanted to share with the pastor, and maybe he could answer this, but I found out a few years ago why Jesus was that sinless blood inside of Mary. Can he explain why, since he became flesh inside the body of Mary, how did his blood remain sinless and is the nature wasn't passed down from him to him. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you see, he was conceived by the Holy Spirit within Mary. Um, you know, it was not essentially being placed in her. It wasn't, you know, like the, the typical way. Um, yeah, we won't go into that. <laughs> You'll be off the air next week. But, uh, <laughs> but no, he, you know, that's... She was a virgin. Uh, she it was not conceived any other way, but the holy conceived of the Holy Spirit is what the Scripture says, and so uh, because of that, um, you know, he he went in as God, basically fully God, fully man. So it, it's not the blood, but it's our sin nature that's transmitted. Uh, so she, he was not actually, you know, uh, conceived in the normal way. May I make a comment? Yeah, go ahead. I, I understand exactly what you said, and I believe that's true. His, 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 uh, he was basically inseminated by the power of the Holy Spirit. But more you realize that the, the organ inside a, a woman, the placenta, 
keeps the blood, the, the two different blood supplies separate, and it's never commingled. So Jesus' blood from the Holy Spirit was perfect, pure, sinless blood for the first time since Adam was created. Correct. And Mary had her own blood supply, and the placenta, God designed, even before Adam and Eve was created, to say, this is my fail-safe system. Jesus is going to have that innocent, perfect, pure, sinless blood again. And Mary, it, it, so it never mingles, because that placenta can ask any doctor in the world this. Hmm. That's, that's interesting. That is interesting. We didn't, didn't know, know the I biological know that. part of that. That's pretty awesome. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Is there anything else? Okay. <clears throat> anything else? We lose them? Fun? I think so, yeah. That's actually All right. that's pretty Th cool. Thanks, Mike. Because <clears throat> somebody was asking me that yesterday about the, uh, the <clears throat> pardon, I was trying to define the, the uh, Trinity. One of the, one of the commonalities between Catholicism and Protestantism is the Trinity, the idea that there is a Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and they are a one but separate. So it doesn't, it, it, and they asked uh, me um, specifically, how come Christ, when he was on earth, didn't know about when the end would come? He said, only the Father knows if he was also God. And I think it's because when he was, I, that's my question for you, because as far as I know, when he was on earth, he was also human, entirely human, right. and suffered the temptations, the, the uh, pain, the, the loneliness, Everything that we experience in life, he went through. Even though he was God, he didn't have access to that, or he had access to it because he said he could have. But he still had to go through it. So, so how how can he? You know, uh, can you explain uh, that question about what? How can he not know the end if he is God, or is that was that just a a restriction in time that he had to suffer while he was here? I'm not quite sure I understand the question, but let me just sort of let me see if I can let me see if I let me see if I can answer the question that I, I don't understand. Um, you know, Christ was fully God, fully man. He came as you know, he came. He the scriptures say he condescended, and that isn't in the way we think. You know, right. someone condescending, I'll hang out with you guys, even though you're below my status. But really, God is way above our status. But Christ came down to be a man, and to be uh, you know born of the Virgin. And so he was fully God and fully man, correct? But um, he had to be tempted in every way and resist that temptation right. to be a perfect sacrifice. So, you know, in terms of him, is your question, how could he not know everything? Correct. In the same way as God? Correct. But we don't know why he may have or may not have limited. There, there's just no and There have been church councils going back centuries and centuries talking about this but there's no mm. you, know, you can't say that you can't specifically say why he didn't know because it's 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 not really because it, it seems to me that that like for instance genesis is only uh, uh what two cha uh two chapters does it talk about creation is that about right yep that's about right <clears throat> and you know people say well they didn't say this in genesis and this in genesis. i was, I was uh, contemplating that the other day and it seems like if they actually in Genesis, explained everything. First of all, it would take another, you know, thousand chapters. But if it, because because to me, Genesis is an overview of what God, how God created everything. And if they explained everything, nobody would have believed it. Because if they started getting into electrons and neutrons and the protons and uh, and how, the we, the how we exceeded, it, yeah. exceeded the speed of light for yeah. that that brief moment in time when everything was when there was no light and then there was light and which now we know they exceeded the laws of physics to actually get everything into place in that moment in time, but to explain that scientifically in the Bible. Two thousand years ago, people would have said, "This is this it doesn't even make sense." Yeah, it would have been like another language. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I think you know, there's there's this misconception that the Bible is a, a book of everything we should know, every answer to every question, and it's not. Um, it's really a book to point to salvation through Christ. Right. And that's really the the reason for it. And uh, 
You know, in the, in the Gospel of John, uh, the last verse of it says, and there are also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. So there's so many things that we don't know about Christ. We don't know much about his childhood other than he went to the temple with his parents and, and got separated from them. But then there's a big gap yeah. between that and his ministry, things that we don't know. And even, uh, you know, all of the information isn't given in all the books. Either. Right. And you're right, there's something so far beyond our comprehension. You know, if we have the mind of God, <laughs> which we don't, you know, not even close, and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. But, uh, you know, you have that, but then it's just not necessary to know for salvation. And, and God has chosen what to reveal to us and what not to. Okay. So not everything is, is there. No. As much as I, I wish I could just pick it up. No, it also says, uh, and it says uh, that uh, um, while we're on earth, we now see through a veil, then we will see in full. So right. if, if you run into, if you're going through your life and you find a Christian or, or whatever faith they are, and they say they have all the answers, <laughs> they're wrong. <laughs> yeah, of course. And we bring so many biases to it as well, right? When you, when you, uh, you know, try to read something into it, you really need to I mean, because you, you boil it all down, it, it's fundamentally... You are not perfect. You never will be perfect. There is nothing you could do to become perfect. So it is only through Christ's sacrifice that we are eligible or, or purified enough to be in the presence of God. Otherwise, when we went to heaven, it would probably just destroy us anyway. And, and it takes faith in Christ. Right. It takes, it takes faith in Christ. That you have to you know, not only... Uh, understand that that's what Christ did, but and not only agree that that's what Christ has done, but you also have to trust in that, which is, it's you know, a big difference between knowing how an airplane works, agreeing that that's how it works, and then sitting in the seat of an airplane and going up with it, right? In the same way, you have to trust fully uh, in Christ. And that's faith, right? And and by faith that we're saved. Um, so it's not it's faith in what Christ has done. So it's what Christ has done that saves us. Not what we faith. could possibly do to earn it. We cannot. Okay. You know, because it just takes one sin and we're done. I know, like a pretty girl walking by. I hate that. Do you? Oh, yeah. I like it. Shh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I'm hearing. laughs> that's, that's, that's true. <laughs> now, now, Santa. <laughs> Santa <laughs> yes. Over the last 50 years, there's been a such a change over o- from... The focus on when I was a kid, Christmas was a lot more about uh, Christ. And then there was like an upsurge of Christmas was more and more about how many, how much stuff you get mm-hmm. at Christmas. Do you find that's changing or what, what have you seen? Uh, in today's economy, it's definitely changing. People are getting less. Uh, I mm. still bring as much as I can um, to everybody's house, but everybody uh, out there is... Trying to uh, get by. So, you, so your resources are dwindled, also. Oh yes, yes. Mm-hmm. We got to power that sleigh, and gas is expensive. And it is. Yeah. yeah, we're looking at a nuclear-powered sleigh that would help us get along. <coughs> yeah. Um, what, would, what will? What will? Were you going to put the reindeer out the pasture? Or? Oh no, we'll still keep those because they kind of guide it. Yeah. And that works out real good. But we just need every now and then when we get a. You know, some strong wind or something. We need a little extra boost. Now, will, will you and the reindeer all have to wear some sort of protective shields because of the radiation? Or oh no, it's safe. Oh good, it's okay. safe. Oh yeah, I, I love. Uh, you, you, you didn't hear about uh, the uh, thing that happened in Japan last year? Uh yes, I did. And you don't have any? You don't think that's good? You know? Well, no, that's human error. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the elves don't have aren't humans, so there's no air. That's right. Oh, oh yes. yeah. Oh, oh, that's oh, awesome. Yeah. I didn't think of that. Yeah. That's pretty. Good. Yeah. There is no error there. Absolutely. Oh. Right. Right. Yeah. Next show asks if you would. Uh, am I supposed to read that out loud? <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, I'm not supposed to read it out loud. Okay. Good. But it's, gonna... but 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 we'll be sure to end on time today. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Good. We would hate. We would hate to be. Uh, we don't. We don't. We close to Christmas. I know. 
Yes. I know. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, so you have seen over over time, uh, in, in the last few years, so so you 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 are comfortable asserting that because of uh, the Obama administration, the return towards Christian uh, return towards Christianity. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I think people are definitely believing in God more, and uh, yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, I think that is a trend that I really do. That people are seeing right now, and I know in our church we're seeing, we've seen a, a few new people coming now, and it's, there seems to be a, a greater interest yeah. uh, because of the difficult times in God, realizing that you know we're not all there is. There's got to be more to life than this. There's, yeah, there's more to life than iPads. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Bad times are good times. For yeah, for for faith. Uh, uh, well, for everything, because when you look back, the uh, struggling times always seem to be the better ones, because you're closer to family and closer to God. Right. Yeah, Santa's so smart. We should have him on more often. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or at least call in. You know. Yeah. But usually, it's, usually isn't doing the rounds. Uh, you know. Well, I know. July. Right. Well, that's true. And the costume was going to be pretty uncomfortable. Oh, in I, July. Did, I didn't oh, think of that. Warm. Yeah. yeah. I didn't yeah. think of that. Yeah. 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 Just getting from the if sleigh come, to in if here. He comes in and is, is uh, you know. Uh, He's going to be all sweaty. If he comes in and is. Uh, um, bathing suit. I don't think anybody's going to recognize Now, I am, no, I am no. double parked out on Elm Street. Well, they won't pull, uh, they won't tell me, will they? Yeah. Uh, yeah. In this town? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Even yeah. a sleigh. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Especially. Well, I'll, I'll remember them if they do. Unless you uh, have, well, it's, it's a Republican town, so as long as you have something, you know, Republican. He's wearing red. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. wearing red, yes. <laughs> Good call. And I do That's have true. a bumper sticker on the back of my sleigh. It, yeah. it, and it says that I am not help, uh, White House approved. Oh, you're oh. not White House? Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, you know, it's funny because we're, you know, talking about uh, uh, Christianity. I know my uh, testimony is really weird. Really weird. I, I started, um, I was really sick as a kid, very physically ill. And it, it was torture, and I'm not going to go into it much more than that. So that when I became 18, 17 or 18, you know, the other kids are saying, well, where am I going to go to college? And I was wondering why I, why I was supposed to exist. Mm. I really didn't care about where I was going to college because I wanted to get, get motivation for continuing. And because if, if, it, if you go by what's uh, preached in the schools, which is that we are a um, basically a fluke of the universe. An accident happened, life began, and over uh, millions and millions of years, human evolved. And so, in, in, a, in a, some regard, human beings are more of a, a almost a uh, parasite on the planet Earth, and not much more. And that's what we were taught in school. So. If you're sick from the day you're born to the time you're 18 and you're, you're looking into the future, that's all you see is more illness and more suffering. And our only purpose for existence is to reproduce and you shouldn't be doing it because you're, you're not a healthy specimen, then there really isn't much point in your existence at all. And it was through that thought pattern that I, uh, I kind of, I struggled and struggled for years and years and years mm. and the chain the, the turning point in my life the one the one thing in my life that i know was uh when i was in a uh because uh, i kept looking for answers uh, i went to some christians who said that if if you really had faith you'd be healed which is a complete perversion of the bible it never says that if that were the that were the case, Paul wouldn't have had that thorn was well, not a thorn in his side. Yeah, thorn in his side. Thorn yeah. in his side that he called it. Something that kept plaguing him and God said, No, I'll give you the grace to get through it, but I'm not getting rid of it. And and that was Paul who was obviously a lot closer. Prayed multiple times he said for yeah. that and it was never taken away. Yeah. And so, so the, the churches during the 80s, when I was looking, that's what they were preaching. A lot of them were preaching this. Right. Well, you know, if you really have faith, you'll be healed. Yeah, yeah that's sort of a prosperity type of gospel. Yeah. It was yeah. thing. And that's, that's not at all. If, if you're sicker than heck yeah. and, and you're wondering, get, trying to find a reason to live, and they're telling you, well, obviously, you, you know, you don't have faith, 
It's like, yeah. whoa. It's so, like I- infomercial Christianity is what I call yeah, it. Yeah, basically. It's <laughs> a good way to look at it. So, um, yeah, you, you might, you, we still go through trials. Life is yeah. difficult. It and, is. And it's really difficult. But when you're in Christ, you know, you have the Holy Spirit indwelling you when you are a Christian. You know, that, that's part of what comes with our faith is the Holy Spirit indwells and, and helps us to change over time, but to change in response to particular situations. So our, our situation may not change, but the, the inside of us, the way we respond to it can change over time and uh, allows you to endure trials. Uh, we know people who are in, undergoing very, very difficult trials in their life. And, yep. and, uh, and they do it because of this faith. Uh, Gary, I know I have some people tell me that they don't believe in God. And I question that. You know, I don't understand how they cannot. And then they question me on my beliefs. And you know what I always tell them? I believe in God. And if I'm wrong, what harm have I done? If you're wrong, <laughs> what harm have you done? You right. Know, you, you better be doing something at the end pretty quick. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we got about three minutes, by the way. Yeah, so, so anyway, it was, it was back in the 80s, I think before Sean was born, my son, um, I was in a church, and I, I just, some, somebody was praying with me, and it, it was the uh, um, my literal Jesus moment, as they call it, because it was, um, and it was really weird because it was when I forgave God for not healing me mm. that I was willing to let go of almost more of a resentment. And if you listen to a lot of atheists, they have resentment towards God. How can you hate something if you don't believe in it? Right. That that doesn't even it's not that even doesn't logic. make sense. Doesn't yeah. make sense at all. And that's what it was. As soon as I let go of that anger towards God, I was willing to accept that Holy Spirit, and that's been the cha- real change, uh, sea change in my life. And and I've gone through a lot of difficulty since, but it's that connection with the Holy Spirit that helps me uh, maintain through it. And you, you ask know? a lot. Of, you ask a lot of hard questions. You have to drill in, and, and you you can't be anti-intellectual. You have to really dig in and ask the hard questions about the Christian faith, any faith, or, or if you're an atheist, you know, ask the hard questions there yeah, uh, as that, well. That, you can't be anti intellectual You have to dig in and, and find answers. That's actually one reason I love this church, Gosstown Congregational Church, mm-hmm. is because it encourages difficult questions. Yeah, absolutely. It, that's it cool. It encourages um, people to inquire and stuff. It's not a... It's too important. It, it's, it, a, it, it's not like years and years ago when I was a kid, if you went to a a pastor and asked them a tough question it's it, they, they looked at you like you what are you a heathen scholar? right right how dare you ask <coughs> how anything? dare you yeah. obviously yeah. you don't know what you're talking about right <laughs> and so that's one reason i love this church is a there's a uh, uh such a profound humility and yet there's still that inquisitive there's that ability to inquire and ask questions and and stuff like that it's it's fun it really is fun like you said it's very intellectual i've been listening to uh um, Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. Oh, yeah. Great book. If, if I had half his intelligence, <laughs> I'd be a genius. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. The guy is exactly. so bright. Yeah, and that's a good place for people to start, too, if yep. they're, you know, to, yep. to begin to investigate a little bit. It is. It is an awesome. The guy, the guy was so sharp. But uh, um, how much time we got, huh? No, it's sure. like we've got about a minute. Did you just call me, hun? Yeah, I did. Wow, that's uh, that's that's I weird. Get, I get drink. Yeah, it is weird. I, I literally don't know what to say. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Santa, we'll talk to him <laughs> afterwards. Oh, 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah, we well. yeah we got to wrap up, <laughs> babe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> okay, sweet cheeks. Anyway, uh. so <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Oh, man, I feel really uncomfortable with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. we got how much minutes? Uh, it's uh, we, it's uh, five of. Well, what time are we supposed to quit? I think five of is, is what, we were, <laughs> what we were informed of last we week. We were informed of. Yes, deformed, yes. We were informed of last week. <laughs> we're supposed to quit at five of. So anyway, um, thank you very much for coming, Pastor. Yeah. Yes, for thank you. Here. Santa. Merry Christmas, yes. guys. Merry Christmas. I get any coal, coal in my uh, stock and I get it. No, I'm no, you, you got, got a good I'm, boy this I'm year. I'm heavily armed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, yes, I know I'm, that. I'm just saying, you know, nothing personal. <laughs> but um, 
But thank you, Santa, for coming. Yes, thank you, Santa. Hi. And it's a nice Santa, surprise. You. Have a good Christmas. You as well, right. Gary. Thank Merry you. Merry Christmas, too. everybody. Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>